Uh, what you up to now? Sharon horn Elstrom here, documenting the journey, day 1,349, on yet another page. I normally do this on my Be Me to Thrive page, but I changed the format of that in Facebook, and it made it really difficult to share anywhere else, so I put it on my Thrive Challenge page. And yesterday, because my mini chat was automatically set up a couple of years ago, and I didn't realize that in January or February, January 15th, I think, 2020, Facebook made changes to the tags that were allowed, and I was using, I guess, tags that I am not allowed to use, so they totally took down and unpublished my account. Well, yesterday, I figured out that it was ManyChat, disconnected my ManyChat, but there is no way to communicate with Facebook, none whatsoever, because it's something went wrong, you need to contact us again or try again later. So I did that, which, can you hear the frustration in my voice? Uh, this is the challenge and the problem and the reason we are flexible when we use other people's platforms for communication. Uh, when we don't have control over things, things can be shut down immediately. I have, I don't know, 1,250 people on that page that I now have no ability to communicate with and my page is just unpublished and it's like disappeared from the Facebook universe. So, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> I am coughing, that's the title of this, coughing, but keep keep moving forward and keep making changes. Uh, so I'm doing this on my Sharon Horn Elstrom page, and I will do it here until I get my Thrive Challenge page back, or I will just keep doing it here, and pretty soon everything will be done on my Sharon Horn Elstrom page, or on my profile. I could do it right on my profile, but this is my place to document my journey. It's my journal of what I'm doing as I transition from the brick and mortar world to the corporate in the corporate world to the online world. It's different than anything I really do or that I've done before. It's just kind of my my daily journal of what's working, what's not working, what's frustrating, what's not. And this is one of the biggest lessons I've learned online is that when we're using other people's tools and platforms, we have to follow their rules. Whether we agree with them or not, whether we think they're fair or not, whether we think they're right or not, and there's a whole lot of my, my uh, dissatisfaction with big platforms like Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, anybody that can ban the president can ban any one of us at any time. I was at uh, a friend of mine's spa last weekend, actually exactly a week ago today, and she and 78,000 other people were banned, their business pages, their personal pages, everything from Facebook on the night of the inauguration. They, with no explanation, no nothing, no recourse, just their, their their online presence disappeared. So she, her business had been on eight years, disappeared in, in the blink of an eye. Uh, and me, the other night, you know, I woke up this morning, I was I recorded my video on my Thrive page, and then as I went to process it, I got warning messages that my, my page had been unpublished and shut down. I'm like, okay, well, then, you know, you try to respond, you try to communicate with Facebook, and there is no communicating with Facebook because they have algorithms, not human beings, automatically turning things off that that we don't know about. And they have things working in the background that we don't know about, which is why they're in front of Senate hearings, right? It's why they're being questioned. It's why there's a whistleblower telling us all the things that we've already known they've been doing. But once it's in our face, I think we have to do something about it. So <coughs> I would imagine, like many other people down the road, I won't be using Facebook. I won't be recording on Facebook. I'll be on StreamYard. I'll be on Zoom, I'll be on some other platform. And again, I won't own those platforms, but we'll just go and flow and use what we have to use to get what we want to get done, done on the planet, in the world, in the universe, right? We want to create the world and the things that work for us. I guess I, that's why I see so many people creating their own software and instead of using other people's software, they're creating their own. They're, they're just going out and it's open source so they get their own software created and produced. Now I think that's, we actually, I was involved in a software startup a couple of years ago. It's been a couple of years ago now when I first came online. And uh, we had a great team, but we outsourced a lot of it to Great Britain. And the Great Britain firm totally, totally messed with us and, and took advantage of us. And we could have sued them, but I am a, I'm not a believer in suing. Although I think suing is sometimes important. It's a business tool, according to some business gurus. But I don't, I don't believe in it if there's other things that I can do. And so to me, 
it wasn't worth the effort of suing this organization to get uh, our stuff done and back. And I didn't want them to complete the job anyway because they weren't doing what they said they were going to do in the first place. So why would I want to continue to work with them? I didn't want to sue them for, for finishing the project. They weren't going to do it right. And they weren't going to, you know, we would have had nothing but problems going forward. So uh, definitely an experience. I guess I haven't talked about that one much. We don't really talk about that, but that was, I guess I'd have to chalk it up as a huge learning experience, an epic failure. And even though we put all the pieces in place to make sure the project was handled properly and that everybody had checks and balances, it still didn't work out for us. So <coughs> just goes to show you, you can do the right things and it doesn't mean everything's going to work out. And so what do you do? You just figure it out and you do the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. So Supersize Your Business today was about being the expression once in a blue moon. And of course, a blue moon has got a couple different definitions. One is when there are two full moons in a single calendar month. That happens about every 32 months. And that is actually a, a misdefinition, but it, it applies and it, it caught on. So that's one definition. Another is um, the fourth full moon in any season is called a blue moon as well. So it's interesting that it just means something that happens rarely or extremely rarely. The moon doesn't actually appear blue, although that would be cool if it did. It just uh, is an expression. It's called a blue moon to differentiate it from the other full moon that it could be mixed up with. So <coughs> my question posed today was, what happens rarely in your business or what could you create in your business on occasion to mix up and supersize and grow your business. I like to blow things up in my business about every three years, whatever businesses I'm in or involved in. I like to kind of not physically actually blow them up, although I've done that as well. I like to blow things up in my mind and my imagination and reimagine what the business could, should, and and might become if we did things differently. And then we, we make changes and, and we you know test different things out to see what we can do to supersize and grow our business. Uh, our <coughs> annual challenge this year, do one thing every day that centers us, was about knowledge coming from books and wisdom coming from life. So today was, it's a two part, two days saying, and so today our question was knowledge that I learned from a book today. So we're gonna share that. And since I'm a big, big bookie, even with my bad eyes, uh, I, I won't have any trouble thinking of some knowledge that I get out of a book today. Get Up and Go Challenge today was about, yesterday we, we talked about what is our natural change reaction? How do we respond to change and challenges? Our thoughts, our feelings, our emotions, our beliefs. What comes up when we're faced with a change or challenge? And today, <coughs> in addition to coughing through that whole video, we discussed and applied a tool called flip switching where we take our immediate response and we ask ourselves, we flip the switch on or off to being more open, being more flowing, asking what else is possible. What's the opposite of this? If I am resisting and denying that change is happening, what's the opposite of that? Well, accepting what is, right? Accepting what's happening. If I'm resisting it, what's the opposite? Lower my resistance. So what are some things I can do to lower my resistance? And so I went through a whole list of, a big list actually, of beliefs and then ways to counter that. Uh, my big question, the WTF to what am I creating now? That was a big flip for me. And then some beliefs and then different things and how to counteract them. And so our challenge today is to ask ourselves in our current way of handling, like for instance, I'm a huge procrastinator because I think, oh, I don't have to decide now. I can decide later. Well, what I do then to flip the switch is I make myself take action immediately. When a change comes, it doesn't have to be solve the whole thing, but I have to take some kind of action right away because then I'm not procrastinating. As soon as we take some action or make a decision or a choice, and then we take action to support that decision or choice, we're committed to making things happen. And once we get moving and making things happen, we're no longer procrastinating. So we had a big, dis big discussion about that. It's actually one of my favorite topics. It's actually one of the easiest things to do is if we know where we are and what we're doing, what we want to do, it's just a matter of filling that gap. And that's what the, the uh, Get Up and Go Challenge is all about. It's about getting us moving and keeping us moving and filling that gap, which is the distance from where we are to where we want to be in all the different areas and aspects of our life. So that's what I'm working on. Um, other things as well, but I've been coughing a lot this week, so I've been 
postponing, changing, rearranging things so that I don't have to talk so much. Except I still do my daily videos because I like to produce consistent content. It holds me accountable to myself to show up every day, whether I feel like it or not. I've got to tell you, this week, there have been some days I haven't felt like it, including today. All right. If I can help you in any way in the offline business world or the online world, you have a question, you don't know who to ask, you don't know where to go, you don't know where to turn, you don't know what to do next, please ask. Don't leave any question unasked. Don't make the mistake of thinking that you don't know what to do or you don't know what to do next or that you're stuck. We're never stuck. That's just a lie that we tell ourselves. So if you don't have anybody to ask, please ask me. You can direct message me on Facebook here on Sharon Horn Elstrom today. And again, I will be on the Sharon Horn Elstrom page. I decided this morning, as I was picking a page to do it on, this is where I'm going to do it now, along with the annual challenge, until I get my Thrive Challenge page back. I want my Thrive Challenge page back because I like to do challenges on the Thrive Challenge page. All right. Have an awesome day if I can help you. Anyway, ask. Otherwise, I'll be with you tomorrow. Bye.